This video is based on the recent publication by Dr. Keith Johnson of MIT in the International Journal of Astrobiology. Over 30 years of searching for dark matter, proposed exotic elementary particles such as WIMPs and axions have not been observed experimentally, even in the latest large underground xenon lux and MIT abracadabra detectors. Nor have the WIMPs predicted from supersymmetry theory been created in the CERN Large Hadron Collider. Other types of dark matter, such as neutrinos and black holes, have been proposed, but thus far not enough of it has been found. WIMPs and axions are non-baryonic elementary particles. Baryonic dark matter, composed of atoms or molecules, has been ruled out in conventional cosmology because it is believed there's not enough of it in the universe. But what about hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe, and the main component of stars and gaseous nebulae? It has been suggested that interstellar hydrogen can form Rydberg matter, a low-density condensed phase of weakly interacting hydrogen atoms. Rydberg matter can become quantum entangled over long effective distances, causing it to be transparent to visible, infrared, and radio frequencies, and thus qualifies as baryonic dark matter. However, hydrogen is not the only interstellar element that can form Rydberg baryonic dark matter. Oxygen, second only to hydrogen in abundance and chemical reactivity, readily combines with hydrogen to form water molecules. It is also known that water molecules can bond to form nano-sized clusters. Here we see five water molecules forming a pentagonal nanocluster. This nanocluster vibrates in the terahertz region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Its cutoff vibrational frequency is 1.5 terahertz. The lowest entropy nanocluster formed by water pentamers is a pentagonal dodecahedral cluster. The dodecahedron contains a hydronium ion, H3O+. This water nanocluster also vibrates at terahertz frequencies. Such nanoclusters are like giant atoms, with electron wave functions that extend from the cluster. These water nanocluster molecular orbitals are also Rydberg orbitals, and therefore are the basis for Rydberg matter. Electron occupation of these Rydberg orbitals explains why such water nanoclusters are transparent, and thus are dark matter. Cosmic dust from supernovae explosions, a scourge to many astronomers, some who may even have lost a Nobel Prize because of it. Yet, cosmic dust, coated with thin layers of amorphous water ice, is a blessing in disguise. With the help of incident cosmic radiation, water nanoclusters are ejected into space from the amorphous water ice coatings of the cosmic dust. Thus, water nanoclusters, ejected from amorphous ice-coated cosmic dust, constitute Rydberg matter. They interact both gravitationally and directly with ordinary matter, and become quantum entangled, over long distances in space, causing them to be transparent to visible, infrared, and radio frequencies. Therefore, they are baryonic dark matter. Rydberg matter is a low-density substance, so one doesn't need a lot of it to explain dark matter, compared with non-baryonic elementary particles, such as WIMPs, axions, and neutrinos. A recent study of dark matter in distant galaxies has found a direct interaction between dark matter and ordinary galactic baryonic matter, supporting this scenario. Observations of CMB galactic dust foreground polarization show that the power of the E mode is twice that of the B mode, whereas they should be equal. This may be due to twice the power of the three water cluster HG squashing vibrational modes compared to that of the two HU twisting modes, power being proportional to the squares of their amplitudes. 
They vibrate and twist at terahertz frequencies, contributing radiation to the CMB between 1 and 6 terahertz. The indicated anisotropic dipole moments along the nanocluster axis are precursors to water nanocluster birefringents, analogous to the terahertz induced birefringents of liquid water. This is because a liquid water film is composed of a network of water nanoclusters, which are birefringent under terahertz induced stimulation. Observational evidence for birefringents of the cosmic microwave background has recently been reported. The suggestion that the cosmic microwave background polarization may be due to cosmic dust emission polarization is actually support for our claim that cosmic birefringence is real and indicative of quintessence new physics. This is due to the anisotropic dipole moments of water nanoclusters ejected from cosmic dust as they capture vacuum energy by the dynamical Casimir effect and vibrate at terahertz frequencies. As support for this theory, the Hubble Space Telescope has revealed a galaxy NGC 1052, 72 million light years from Earth, where one can literally see through to other galaxies behind it. It is an ultra diffuse galaxy, almost as wide as the Milky Way, but contains only one two hundredth of the number of stars in the Milky Way. The galaxy contains, at most, only one four hundredth of the amount of dark matter expected from theory. The galaxy ultra-diffuseness suggests a lack of the cosmic dust characteristic of most galaxies, thus connecting dark matter to cosmic dust. The first known interstellar object, Oumuamua, entered our solar system in 2017 and has been a mystery ever since. Theories of its origin abound, including alien. The most likely origin is natural, as described in the recent publication. In the following, we elaborate on this fractal dust scenario and suggest that Oumuamua may actually be a source of cosmic dark matter. While Oumuamua is very large compared to nano-sized cosmic dust, around 100 meters long and possibly disc-shaped, it should be covered by layers of amorphous water ice. The fractal nature of this huge dust aggregate, combined with the effects of solar and cosmic radiation, should promote the ejection of water nanoclusters to interstellar space. There, water clusters constitute a form of Rydberg baryonic dark matter, as is the case for ordinary cosmic dust, and thus will be invisible. This explains the lack of a cometary tail which had ruled out the theory that Oumuamua is a comet. The ejection of water nanoclusters from Oumuamua may also promote its rotation. Where in our galaxy did Oumuamua come from? Was the otherwise natural fractal dust object with its amorphous water ice coating possibly engineered purposely? Could the ejected water nanoclusters comprising Rydberg matter have another cosmic goal and cosmology implications? What about dark energy, which is believed to be responsible for the accelerating expansion of the universe? Unfortunately, quantum field theory predicts a dark energy density associated with quantum fluctuations of the vacuum that is too large by 120 orders of magnitude. This is called the vacuum catastrophe. To solve this problem, we first view the vacuum electromagnetic field as a collection of quantized harmonic oscillators of normal mode frequencies, nu sub k, summing over the zero point energies of each oscillator mode. H is Planck's constant, and C is the velocity of light in a vacuum. This leads to the energy density equation shown here. The wave vector, k, signifies the normal modes of the electromagnetic field that are consistent with the boundary conditions on the quantization volume, v. As v approaches infinity, one obtains the right-hand side of the equation. We can remove the infinity by replacing the upper limit of the integral by a cutoff frequency set by the Planck scale but this still results in a huge vacuum energy by 120 orders of magnitude. 
If instead, we subtract the energy density, rho sub c, of virtual photons of zero-point vacuum fluctuations captured by ejected water nanoclusters, through the microscopic dynamical Casimir effect, the divergent integral is largely cancelled. New sub c is the cutoff vibrational frequency of the ejected water nanoclusters. This leaves the finite quantity shown to be identified with the dark energy density. For the prominent pentagonal dodecahedral water nanocluster, the cutoff vibrational frequency is approximately 1.7 terahertz. This formula produces the correct small dark energy density and consequently the small cosmological constant. To summarize visually, Cosmic water nanoclusters can absorb vibrationally, by the microscopic dynamical Casimir effect, the unwanted high-frequency virtual photons of zero-point energy vacuum fluctuations. Only vacuum fluctuations below the water nanocluster cutoff vibrational frequency are gravitationally active. The water nanocluster E and B vibrations, induced by the capture of vacuum energy, is an unlimited source of energy. It would be implemented in reactors harvesting the water nanoclusters ejected to space from cosmic dust and using their hydrokinetic energies as propellant. These reactors would be the power sources for a starship and its drones. Because of the prodigious amounts of cosmic dust in our Milky Way galaxy, there would also be a wealth of ejected water nanoclusters holding enough captured vacuum energy to fuel an interstellar mothership and its drones throughout our galaxy, perhaps even to the farthest quasars and their black holes. One of the largest and most distant reservoirs of water, detected in the universe, exists in a high redshift quasar, more than 12 billion light-years away. A quasar is an extremely bright active galactic object, in which a supermassive black hole, with mass ranging from millions to tens of billions of times the mass of our Sun, is surrounded by a gaseous accretion disk. The quasar water vapor mass is at least 140 trillion times the mass of all the water in the oceans of planet Earth and 100,000 times more massive than our Sun. The quasar water vapor produces cosmic water nanoclusters. They are a coolant for rapid early star formation. Gravitational collapse of these stars leads to a massive spinning black hole like that shown here. The entangled, low-entropy water nanoclusters that helped create the stars that collapse to the black hole will be pulled into it by its gravitation. Inside, they constitute exotic matter with negative pressure that promotes wormhole formation. Is it possible that the raining down by these water nanoclusters on a planet that was associated with one of the collapsing stars, but is now captured by the black hole? could provide the water necessary for life on that planet, perhaps even a water planet, such as those in the science fiction film, Interstellar, where a team of scientists, attempting to save humanity from a dying Earth, travel through a wormhole, and land on water and ice-covered planets near a black hole. At far enough distances from the black hole, at least 10 light years, the gravitational environment is stable enough for planets to form from the dense dust of the accretion disk. According to published research, more than 10,000 planets are possible around a supermassive black hole. For such a planet, the accretion disk would be as bright in the sky as Earth's sun. Because such quasars and their associated massive black holes are the oldest objects in the universe, even a few life-supporting planets there would allow for the possibility of technologically advanced civilizations to exist not long after the very beginning of the universe. Such a civilization may have launched probes into the black hole to investigate its space-time singularity and possibly engineered a stable wormhole pass-through to the other side. 
The human brain is approximately 75% water by weight. Much of that water is in the form of nanoclusters inside the neuron microtubules. Their terahertz vibrations are a basis for human consciousness. If this were true also for an early advanced civilization, information carried by the quantum entangled water nanoclusters, and thus consciousness itself, could be preserved as one is swept through the wormhole connecting the black hole to a white hole in another part of the universe. The quantum entangled, low entropy water nanoclusters, and the conscious information carried by them, could possibly survive and be transported out of the wormhole, as so-called Hawking radiation, into another part of the universe. What universe? A popular cosmology theory is the multiverse, which follows from the inflationary Big Bang theory. In the multiverse, it is likely that few universes have the exact physical constants that permit the existence of water and other prebiotic molecules necessary for planetary life as we know it. In contrast to the multiverse, the parallel universes, or many worlds theory, derived from quantum mechanics, predicts an infinite number of nearly identical worlds. Here parallel lives occur simultaneously, but we have no practical way of entering or communicating with those worlds. In the present theory, we have proposed that supernovae produce ice-coated cosmic dust that ejects water nanoclusters, filling space as a quintessent scalar field of dark matter. Like the fifth element of Plato and Aristotle, this is the terahertz radiative mode of an ejected pentagonal dodecahedral water nanocluster, equal in frequency to the 1.7 terahertz value in the formula that agrees with the presently observed dark energy density. The indicated anisotropic dipole moments along the nanocluster axis are precursors to water nanocluster biorefringents, analogous to the terahertz induced biorefringents of liquid water. Observational evidence for biofinctions of the cosmic microwave background has recently been reported. As our universe continues to expand, water nanoclusters ejected from cosmic dust will grow larger, and their vibrational frequencies will decrease. Large water clusters are less interacting with the prebiotic molecules of life. With decreasing vibration frequency, Dark energy density also decreases. The universe will stop expanding and contract, as the gravity of the remaining matter takes over. The universe will expand again, leading to a single cyclic universe, instead of an inflationary multiverse. According to this scenario, we are presently living at the ideal time in our universe for life, as we know it, to exist. And water nanoclusters, ejected from cosmic dust, could be the seeds of life throughout the universe.